it's time to dish with D. That's me. I'm coming you live with dinner tonight. Well, it doesn't say live. I'm coming you with a video of dinner tonight. I am making the Hungry Girl Sloppy Jane Casserole from the new Fall Hungry Girl magazine. It's on sale now at stores, or you can get it online. If you've not gotten this magazine, you should. It's got some really good recipes, and this is one. This one is from, I think it's six ingredient or less casseroles. I think that's what it's called. That's the second one I've made. Yeah, six ingredient casseroles. I already made the, I think it's called the Thanksgiving casserole, which was amazing. This is the Sloppy Jane casserole. So I thought it'd be fun. The kids, and we haven't been too fond of Sloppy Joes in a long time. I thought maybe this will reinvigorate their love for Sloppy Joes. So I thought I'd try it out. So I thought I'd take you guys along with me. And good news, my oven's working. Oh, well, I shouldn't say it's working. I got a new one. So yeah, you all heard about that fiasco. But yes, you'll be seeing a couple big things coming this week. God willing. So let's get started on the Sloppy Jane casserole. It serves for... It, it's in a, okay, 250 calories. I will have everything listed in my, you can't get her recipes. I will put a link to it, but you can't get her recipes in this magazine online. So I will type it out in my recipe blog because that's the kind of gal I am. But this is from Lisa Lillian's Hungry Girl Fall Magazine on sales now. All right, let's bring it out. Let's get started. This is very easy. I have a large bowl. Right, in a large bowl, combine crushed tomatoes, brown sugar, Worcestershire. Okay, it says a cup of crushed tomatoes. Well, yeah, I have the big can, so I'm just going to eyeball it because there's really no point in crushed tomatoes in my world. So I'm going to see what I think looks like a cup. And if it's a little bit more, all the better. All right, and I need to get a whisk. Spatula. Okay. And it says Worcestershire, brown sugar, and here. And I, I put some garlic in because I'm Italian, you know? Enough said. And I did use the sugar substitute. I don't really have any brown sugar around the house. Oops. And the seasoning blend. Garlic powder, chili powder, paprika, and salt. And let me just give them a mix. Now it says to brown the ground beef, one pound of raw extra lean ground beef, at least 96% lean with some onion, which I omitted the onion because some people in this house don't like onion. Who shall remain nameless? But I did not, also I did not use 96%. I don't buy 96%. I don't know about you, but I'm on a budget and I'm feeding three men and me and I just I'm not spending that much money for 96% lamb ground beef I will take the points for the 90 or the 85 that's a choice like I said I will have the recipe how she has it written and I'll give you the points for the difference I'm only adding two more points to my serving maybe even three but you know what I think it's worth it okay we combined everything we cooked our beef and we have to add it to this mixture you know, instead of pounds, I have a little over a pound because that's how I packaged it. So we're just going to have to, again, I have men here, so it's, it's going to make a little bit of a difference. So there we go. And I'm just going to coat the meat with the sauce and spice. I guess I'm probably going to add more of the crushed tomatoes because I have it here anyway. A little bit more. In my world, crushed tomatoes really... It's not gonna add any points, just tomatoes. And there's enough seasoning in here not to worry about it. That's much better, much moister. Especially when you're using that lean ground beef, you should really always use it. If you're using that 96, you need you need more tomato sauce. It's gonna be dry as the dickens. All right, now we get our eight by eight pan that I sprayed with the non-stick spray. Double checking because I really didn't check this out before I started it. There we go. We just dump a roni, get all that goodness out. Don't leave any little specks behind. Okay. Right here. All right, spread evenly. 
best you can. All right, so it's top with your hash browns. This is three cups, I believe, of thawed hash browns. And we're just going to top them on top. So you purple people, you won't have to count these because there are zero, but make sure you check, make sure you there is no hydrogenated oil, as I like to say, because some of these hash browns have that. And we don't want that because then we'll have to count it and we don't want to do that. Spread, 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 evenly, evenly, evenly. Get them out of there. Come on, folks, into the pool. Now, if you were making this, I mean, I could have added more potatoes to two thirds of this for the boys. I probably should have. That would bulk it up for them, and your your corner would have the right amount. Remember, if you're feeding your family, sometimes, especially men, they need more calories and, and stuff than we do. So, alrighty, I'll put this back over here. All right, it says bake until hot and bubbly around 25 minutes. So in 25 minutes, I'm gonna bring you back and we're gonna look at this bubbly casserole. And then we have one more step after that. Okay, she cooked for about a half an hour and I'm waiting for the oven to go to broil. And we're gonna broil her till the potatoes are brown and it should be ready. And I will show you what it looks like when I pull it out of the broiler. It's a new oven, new broiler, so I'm not quite sure how long it's gonna to take to even get started, but she looks really good. Mmm. And some garlic bread for the side, cause why not? Okay, she was under the broiler. It's a new broiler, so I'd say it was about 10 minutes or so. I kept my eye on it, cause you, know how qu you can see how quick the bread cooked. So here we are, she looks golden and yummy. And it's four portions, so one fourth of this is mine. And let me grab the, hold on. Oh, I'll bring you over with me. Let's walk over, shall we? Okay, on purple, the Sloppy Joe casserole is four points. Mine is going to be seven with the different meat that I used. So a fourth of that is seven on blue. If you follow hers, it would be Five points and green I don't know because I didn't pull that one up but yeah when you get the magazine you go on the hungry girls website hungry-girl.com slash magazine she gives you the printable PDFs for um, the magazine so you get them in blue I got them for blue and purple but you can get them all three if you wanted and they're free they're included and there's a picture I think mine looks pretty much like this so yep yeah. there we go makes four servings there's the recipe. I will definitely be putting this in, and I'm gonna plate mine up with a side salad. I'm going to show you what it looks like and have a taste. Okay, there is one fourth of the recipe on my plate with my side salad and my luscious ranch dressing, which I have up on the channel. It's delicious. I now add xanthan gum, and look how thick it is. It's amazing. So, yep, check out Hungry Girls New Magazine, and you need to make this casserole for yourself. How good does that look? Thank you for joining me for this quick little casserole. Thank Hungry Girl for creating it and enjoy. I always say it's always fun to try something new. I'm in a rut. So this was easy, easy, delicious, low in point. And like I said, you could change up the meat. You could even use turkey or chicken and ground if you wanted. Whatever, it's your pickle. You have at it. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoy these videos, give them a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Let you know when I upload. Have a great day.